What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here. In this question, we have three rational expressions that we have to simplify. We also have to state the restrictions on variables. So when simplifying rational expressions, personally, I like to follow a three-step process. So first, I want to make sure that everything is factored in every numerator, every denominator. And then from there, once everything is factored, I want to state restrictions. And basically restrictions are when the denominator equals zero. And then once I've stated the restrictions, then I can simplify. You don't want to simplify before stating the restrictions because then you might miss out on factors that you have to include in the restrictions. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we do more questions. But let's follow this three-step process for each of these. So starting with this first rational expression, first step is we have to factor. Well, if we look at the numerator and look at the denominator, notice everything's already factored. There's nothing else that we can factor in both. Next, number two, you want to state restrictions. And that's basically variables cannot make the denominator equal to zero. Because as you know, whenever we divide by zero, that would give us something that is undefined. So when can the denominator equal zero here? Well, notice that if x is equal to zero, the denominator would be zero. And then if y is equal to zero, the denominator would be zero as well. So x cannot equal zero and y cannot equal zero because if one of them does equal zero, denominator would be zero and then the rational expression would be undefined. So that right there, these two are your restrictions for this here, this rational expression. And then from there, you just wanna simplify. So what we can do, we can simplify the four over six, that is two over three x cubed divided by x is like x cubed divided by x to the 1. Similar base, so we subtract the exponents. x3 minus x1, that gives us x2. And then over here, we have y2 divided by y3, which would be y to the negative 1, which would be a y value in the denominator. Another way to see that is if we have y2 over y3, well, that's like having two y's at the top and then three y's at the bottom. So cancel, 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 cancel. We're left with a y at the bottom. Here we have, if you have x cubed over x to the one, we got three x's at the top and then we have one x at the bottom. Cancel, cancel, we're left with two x's at the top. Right, so that's how that works. And then the restrictions are, I wrote them over here on the side, x cannot equal zero, y cannot equal zero. So notice that if we tried to get the restrictions after we simplified, we would only have y cannot equal zero because there's no x variable there. But you have to include the x variable because you always have to include the restrictions from the original rational expression before you simplify. That's why I put that restriction step before simplifying. All right, so for this question, that there is the final answer. Okay, what about number two? Step one, we have to factor. So notice in the numerator, we can take out a two. So we'll be left with x plus three. And then the denominator, we can factor that as well. If I do that down here, Uh, two numbers that multiply to negative six, two times negative three, and add up to five, that would be um, positive six x minus x, right? Positive six, negative one. So positive six times negative one is negative six, and then positive six minus one gives us positive five. So we could decompose that positive five x into six x minus x. Then we could factor out a 2x from these two, factor out a negative 1 from these two, 
And then notice how these are the same brackets. So we got x plus 3 over 2x minus 1. Right? So everything is factored. We completed step 1. Now from step 2, you want to get the restrictions. So let's put the restrictions down here. So basically, the denominator cannot equal 0. So that means x plus 3 cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal negative 3. That's one restriction. Also, 2x minus 1 cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal 1 over 2. That is another restriction. If x is one of those two numbers, then the denominator is going to be 0 because that whole bracket, either this one or that whole bracket, it's going to be 0, which makes the entire denominator equal to 0. Right, so we got the restrictions before we simplify it, and now we can simplify. Notice x plus 3, it's common in both, so those cancel out. So we're just left with 2 over 2x minus 1. So that is the simplified rational expression. Those are the restrictions. And then finally, number 3, I'm going to erase the steps here. Hopefully you have them written down. So first step is we factor. Notice that from the um, numerator, we could take out an x. We're left with 9x squared minus 12x plus 6. And then this is all over 2x. And then from here, easy to see, x cannot equal 0. That's going to be the restriction. Right? Because if x is 0, the denominator will be 0. Then the x's cancel out. So we're left with 9x squared minus 12x plus 6 over 2. Another thing you could do is you could split up the fraction as well if you want to show it like that. So you could have 9 over 2x squared minus 12x over 2, which would just give us 6x plus 6 over 2, which would give us 3. Right? So either way works. I'd probably just leave it like this. Another thing you could have done initially is just split up the fraction there and then simplified each one. It would simplify to that. But uh, I like to keep the one fraction as a whole. So simplifies to that and then x cannot equal zero. That is the restriction.